Now I will show you the peritoneal relations of the uterus and its different force forming the different ligaments. Uh, see the uterus anteriorly it is covered by peritoneum and if I trace it downwards at the level of internal os or isthmus this peritoneum is reflecting onto the upper surface of the urinary bladder forming a pouch here this is the pouch depression this is called uterovesical pouch anteriorly and if I see posteriorly here this peritoneum on the posterior surface it is going downwards it is covering the level of isthmus going downwards then upper part of the cervix then the posterior fornix of the vaginal wall then it is reflecting onto the rectum forming a deep pouch here this is called the recto uterine pouch or pouch of Douglas but on each side this peritoneum it is going laterally to be attached with the lateral pelvic wall now how this different peritoneum folds forming the different ligaments you know in the uterus there are so many ligaments some of them are formed by the peritoneal folds and some of them are formed by the condensation of the pelvic fossa or some embryological remnant. What are these ligaments? If we classify the ligaments, true ligament and false ligaments, then that ligaments will be as follows. The false ligaments means folds of peritoneum. Then what are these false ligaments? The false ligaments are mainly four. One is the largest false ligament is the broad ligament. Then another one is the uterophysical ligament or uterophysical fold from uterus to the urinary bladder and another one is the recto uterine that is from the uterus to the rectum recto uterine fold and another one is the recto vaginal fold so these are the four folds of peritoneum forming the false ligament of the uterus and what are the true ligaments True ligaments are, I told you, they are formed by the pelvic fossa condensation along with some connective tissue and some smooth muscle fibers. And these ligaments, one by one, I am telling you, this is uterine tube. So, anteriorly and inferiorly to the attachment of the uterine tube is a round ligament. And posteriorly, here is the ligament of ovary this one from uterine angle to the ovary so ligament of ovary so both the round ligament and ligament of ovary they are the developmental remnant of the governaculum of ovary it is a fibromuscular band forming the true ligaments and it is useful particularly the round ligament it helped to maintain the antiflexion and antifarsal because it is giving a traction anteriorly from both sides in this way and similarly from the posterior side another ligament is there deep to this fold from uterus to the sacrum called uterosacral ligament the uterosacral ligament again it is the condensation of the pelvic fossa and forming a ligament which is under cover of this peritoneal fold so this is the peritoneal fold deep to which is the uterosacral ligament extending from the cervix to the third piece of coccyx behind. So, this fold and this ligament forming the lateral boundary of the pouch of Douglas. Another true ligament is there that is below the attachment of this broad ligament is the McEndross ligament or the Tanva cervical ligament which is also formed by the condensation of the connective tissue or the pelvic fossa. This two lateral ligament or transverse ligament they help to maintain the uterus in the position so that it does not drag downwards so lateral traction by the transverse cervical ligament so anterior traction by round ligament posterior traction by the uterosacral ligament and lateral traction by the cardinal ligament or transverse cervical ligament or mackendorff's ligament true ligaments 
like ground ligament, utrocycal, pubic cervical, and transverse cervical ligament, of which the transverse cervical ligament or cardinal ligament is uh, or McIntosh ligament is the most important ligament of these four uh, because this uh, ligament it holds the uterus in position by its lateral traction. The injury of this ligament during childbirth may cause the uterus to descend downwards forming uterine prolapse.